So today we're going to talk about using GradePro software to help in the creation of practice management guidelines. GradePro software is a free software um, that's intended to support the complete process of developing healthcare guidelines. And there's many things you can do with the software. The first thing that we're going to look at is just obtaining it. So anybody can log in to gradepro.org, and you can see that at the top of the screen. We're at the starting um, tab here. The first thing to do if you don't have an account already is to hit the Login Sign Up button, and that will take you through prompts to create a free account. The only things that you have to provide are your name and email address, and you'll be logged into your GradePro account. I'm going to flip to the next tab because I already have a GradePro account so that we don't um, need to spend time registering on the video. Just keep in mind that the main functions of the GradePro software are to help manage your team that's helping you comprise the guidelines, to create evidence tables for your practice management guideline, and to help disseminate information throughout the members of your team in an easy way that everyone can access just by joining uh, the software program. So we're going to flip to this tab. And this is what it looks like when you've already logged into the software. If you haven't used it before for a guideline, this home screen will probably be blank. And you will start with a new project. If you look in the upper right corner of the screen, it says New Project. You would hit that tab and start. The first thing I do want to show, however, there are two good resources to use if you're just getting started with the software. One is the User Guide. And you can access that once you're logged in usually through this tab here, or one of the tabs on the top, you can find the user guide. It looks like this. Um, it's also at gdt.guidelinedevelopment.org. And the user guide is very helpful in terms of getting you started with GradePro. So you can always refer to that as you're using the software. Uh, it shows you screenshots of tabs that you'll be using, how to log in and get started with the site, and how to use the project management screens, although we'll look at some of that <clears throat> on this video. I'm going to close that tab out, and we're going to move back to this tab. The other very important thing that you can use in the GradePro software is the GradePro Handbook. And I would encourage anyone writing a practice management guideline to go into the software and click on Handbook and look through this. And you also refer to it as you're doing the guideline. It is really a pretty extensive overview of the Grade Approach. And you can see on the left-hand side here, you can click on any of the tabs, Overview of the Grade Approach. You can look at when you're rating the quality of your evidence. It gives you all the definitions that you need to rate your evidence. So you don't have to have it in front of you in paper form, or you don't have to scramble around to look for it online. Anything you need to create guidelines using GRADE as far as information is here in the handbook. So again, for someone new to guidelines or new to GradePro, I would take advantage of the handbook uh, and look through it and read it, and you will refer to it as you go through the process. Whenever you open a screen in GradePro, you can always close it, and you'll go back to your original screen. So again, when you log into GradePro for the first time, if you're starting a new project, you hit New Project. You can also import a previous project if you have that in another software system, uh, or you can continue where you left off. We're going to look at an actual guideline in progress on this version of GradePro so you can see the tabs. This is, these are the Pediatric Renal Trauma Guidelines that are being created by EAST. So if you want to go into your project, you would simply click on that screen and you'll see a number of tabs on the left-hand side of the screen. One of the things I want to draw your attention to uh, is the Tasks tab first before we get into the actual evidence tabs. On the task tab, you can see that you have visualization of a calendar over here on the right-hand side of the screen, and you can create agenda items for your team that can be shared with the team. You can see here that you can add a task. So if we had a conference call or a meeting, you could add that there, and it would show up on the calendar. And this calendar is shared with anyone that you give access to for GradePro. So this is a good place to start if you're working with a team of people and creating your guideline to create a calendar. And you can check off tasks as they're completed. The next tab is Team. So on the Team tab, you can list all the members of your team. And you can see here on the left-hand side we have the members. Um, you can give them access, and that's simply via 
uh, an email exchange. You can give them access rights to uh, GradePro, and that's very easily done. So you can see that a lot of people here on the team have administrative access, and then here there's a pending invitation uh, for a panel member. So you use this to communicate with members of your team, and anyone can log on remotely uh, and start working on the project. You can also manage your conflict of interest statements through this tab if it's applicable to you. And you can see um, here at the top you could select the type of form that you need. They have some of the basic forms uh, and work with that within this tab, sending notifications and sending reminders. So that's very helpful. We'll go down to the Scope tab. This, the Scope tab is a very complex tab that you don't have to use when writing a guideline, but you can uh, if you choose to use it. In the Scope Guideline, you're able to put your questions in, your outcomes of interest, and it will help guide you um, as a complex question generation module. And it can help the team create, brainstorm, and select the best PICO questions to work on. And it's a seven-step process to use uh, this Scope tab. Not everybody uses this to write a guideline, but it's there, and it's very straightforward as to how you enter the information. It's things like title, purpose, your target population, setting. As you can see, our team didn't use this tab, but you, you can certainly use this. You enter your questions, and you can follow through if you look at the top of your screen from initial draft through brainstorming, your completed list, prioritize your questions, and things like that. And if you want to carry it all the way over, you can use the Finish tab, and Scope may help you when you're trying to narrow down the PICO questions you're using. Again, not everyone uses this tab, but it's there. If you want more information on that, I would refer to the uh, GradePro User Guide where it gives you some step-by-step -step instructions. We're then going to go to the Reference tab. We're just going to scroll down in order to make it easier. Uh, again, you can put your references right in GradePro if you want to do that. We did not choose to do that with this guideline, but you can easily do it adding the authors, the title, the year, so on. We're going to script the prog uh, skip, excuse me, the prognosis tab for a second, and we're going to go to comparisons because this is where you'll spend most of your time in the Grade Pro software. So comparisons is where you enter your PICO questions. For those of you who are familiar with writing guidelines, you know that you will formulate PICO questions. You can enter them directly in the Grade Pro software. If you look down here at the bottom, you can see we already have our questions entered one through four, but you can add a management question. And it's very simple. So if you were asking the question, should operative versus non-operative management be used for children with renal trauma, you would go through each of the tabs, and you would enter your intervention, your comparison, and then your population. You could also add setting and bibliography if necessary, but you just need to enter the basic information for the PICO, and you hit Finish, and it will generate the question so it will look like these questions above. So I'm going to go first to number one. We're just going to use that as an example. If you click on this question, <clears throat> you'll see that you go right to your evidence tables. The one thing that you are definitely going to use the GradePro software for is to generate evidence tables. And this is very easy if you want to enter data directly in the software. So the first thing that you would do, you can see that the outcomes for our PICO question have already been added here. So our outcomes, for example, were renal loss, blood transfusion, urinoma formation, additional procedures, additional imaging, and longer hospital stay. Those were simply added by hitting the button Add Outcome, which I'm doing right now. You can add your outcome. You choose uh, what kind it is. Uh, and you know, going through these buttons and clicking is very easy. These different categories will be prompted as you enter your outcome. So this is right through the software you're adding this information, the study design, the risk of bias, inconsistency, indirectness, and, and um, quality assessments like that. The definitions of all of these at the top are in the Grade Pro Handbook, which again is available within the software Okay, if you want to go to the handbook. So you can look up the definitions or direct your team members there. And that's where we were able to decide on these categories. The software itself will then calculate uh, this number right here. You're going to enter the number of patients in the study. I'm clicking on the tab just to show you an example. And you have to pull that data yourself, obviously, but you're going to add the number of patients with the event. In this case, say it was operative intervention for renal trauma and the total number of patients. You'll hit Apply. 
and the software will generate numbers for you, including um, relative and 95% confidence intervals, absolute, com if, absolute confidence intervals if applicable. And then based on your choices over here, it will rate the quality of your evidence and it will come up with that rating. And this is the definition of your outcome which you choose yourself. Uh, if your team voted that the outcome was critical, important, not important, etc. All of this is really intuitive within the software. So you're just making choices and entering numbers as you go along. After you enter numbers and you rate the quality of your data, again the definitions are in the handbook and you can just pick here as you go through the boxes, it will generate an evidence table. And these evidence tables can be exported and you can use them uh, in this format for publication or to share with team members in order to take votes and make recommendations. If you continue to scroll down the comparison section, there's a recommendation section. Okay, and that's when the team decides on making the recommendations. And you can use this panel. We have not gotten to that step here with our team. This is a presentation tab. And you can fill in the presentation and export it as an interactive link that you can send to anyone. All of the things that you generate in the GradePro software are exportable, which makes it really nice. We're going to go down to Document Sections where you can actually create in GradePro a mock-up or a document of your guideline. This may not be the format that you need it in for publication if you're doing a guideline for EAST or another organization, but it at least gives you sort of an idea if you look on the right-hand side here of the sections that you would be using. And you can enter the information in here to share with your team. So this is just a helpful tab if you, if you choose to use it. Some people choose not to. Finally, there's a dissemination tab. And this is a way that you can disseminate your evidence profiles if you choose to, uh, and export them to a mobile app, <clears throat> which again, not everybody uses this section here, but you can do that if you want to. I think when you first log into GradePro and download the software, your real focus is going to be on this comparison tab where you enter your PICO questions and you create your evidence tables. And that's the, the, par, the place at which most people start who are creating guidelines. The other tab that you'll use often is the Team tab to manage your team members and to communicate with your team members in terms of sharing information, letting them know when evidence panels are ready and evidence tables are ready. Uh, this will automatically generate emails to team members through GradePro, and they'll receive emails from GradePro saying PICO questions are ready to view, et cetera, and they can just click on a link within their emails and enter again right into the software once they have an account. So just to wrap up our tutorial about Grade, We'll go back tab by tab. The first step is to log in or to sign up for the software. It's free, gradepro.org. The second task really should be to access the Grade Handbook, read through it, uh, and look at the definitions and the methodology of Grade, which is right within the software itself. The other thing that's available to you is the Grade Pro User Guide, and I, and I would certainly use that to get familiar with the software. It's very straightforward and intuitive. You'll then be directed to your home screen. We're going to try to go back to the home screen here if we can when you first log in. Okay, your home screen will look something like this. You can create a new project, import projects, keep your projects active or archived. And then when you start your guideline, every time you log in, you're just going to go into it and start working using the tabs on the left-hand side of the screen. And that's really a, beginning, a beginner's guide to how to use the GradePro software.